join me to find out what's in the bag. Okay, so today has been a busy day. I've already filmed one video, so this is my second video, but that's neither here nor there. So welcome back to Life of Robert's Wife, and I am going to come today with another fabric haul. Many of you may know that I am a moderator for the Knit Pop Fabrics group, and I noticed that they put up some new fabrics that they were going to include on the website. And so since I hadn't been on the website in a while, I decided, you know what, let me make a stop. Let me come through, see what y'all got. And um, I ended up buying a lot. And it's been... So let's see what I have in here. This is my first time opening it, like seriously. This is not just for you guys. This is... <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. This bag is so dirty. I have to wash my hand after this. Okay, so maybe if I have my computer, I can uh, see my hands. Uh, I don't want to touch my pretty fabrics. Okay, so I opened the bag. They packed it in very nice, didn't they? Um, so that's why they call it Nick Pop because they try to pack it up as best as they can for the customers. I keep touching this bag and it's been on me. Okay. <gasps> Ooh. Look at this. Look at here. Look at here. Oh, this is so nice. This is um a real knit. Oh, y'all, this will make a beautiful oversized sweater. Like, you can choose, I'm sorry, you can choose which side. If you can tell, like, you can see the difference in the texture. Like, this is more smooth. And then this is, like, like the furry side. But this, oh, my goodness. This feels like it will make a perfect, perfect um, oversized sweater. And it is the season, tis the season. Recently, I pre-tested a pattern for a company and they're coming out with this gorgeous sweater. When I say gorgeous, I mean gorgeous sweater. And I really want to use this fabric here. And again, I already showed it to you. Um, it is a rib knit. I don't know if it's, I don't know the, the name before it, but I saw somebody model this in the Knit Pie Fabric Group and I was like, oh, I need some of that fabric. And so I think I did two yards to this i might have bought three um because i wanted enough for this particular sweater that is about to come out like when y'all see this sweater it's just gonna change the game like really and um i thought this was perfect because the sweater looked almost oversized but it had a look classy you know a little classy and sassy with it too and it wasn't too much you know i don't want to be too much but I think that, that what I saw was just right. And so um, this fabric here, with this sweater, I'm telling you, like, I need to get in the pattern, the pattern testing group, because when I tell you when that sweater comes out, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work with it because it was beautiful. It was the most gorgeous sweater I've seen. So um, be on the lookout, you know, for those of you who are not on Facebook, you know, I even if you just make a profile just to get in some of these sewing groups, do so. I mean, people are giving out loads of information that will help you with your skills. Like when I first joined Facebook years ago, especially as a novice sewist, uh, there were so many groups and, you know, you ask people like, you know how do you do that how how do you get that done or what skill or you know they will actually help you or they will send you in a direction um for you to learn because you know we're all out here trying to make it and all of us at one time did not know you just didn't come out the womb sewing nobody did so don't let anybody tell you that nobody just came out the womb sewing 
everyone needed help. Everyone had to ask for help or somebody gave you the information, at least pointed you in the direction to give you the information for you to know what you know now and for where you to be where you are now. So sometimes people be getting into it about, you know, that's my stuff and, you know, I ain't telling nobody. Y'all learn on your own. One thing, though, I do understand you have to um, protect your business. Okay. Now that's on that's giving balance. You have to protect your business. Um, and I didn't know how serious that was until I saw a post in a craft group. Okay, I'm not gonna give the name. But there was a craft group on Facebook. And a person just a, a question that you see all the time. If the person asked the question, they said, um, you know, what are you guys? What, what are your best sellers? Can you give me pics of your best sellers? And this one person, um, he came on and he said, why would I tell you what is my best seller so that you can copy it, put your twist on it, and take away my customers? He was like, um, and it was a male who said it. And he said, um, you know, and some people began to disagree with him. And it was like, you could have just kept scrolling. You didn't have to say what you had to say. And he was very adamant. He was like, no, what the customer base I have and where my business is now, I put in work, I put in time, I put in sweat for this. And it took years for me to get where I am now and for me to be able to ship to all over the country, all over the world. So I'm not just going to give you what is my bestseller so that you can take it and try to make it your bestseller. And of course, people try to get balanced and say, you know, it's enough people out here where you know everybody can make their own money and it won't really because if your customers love you they're going to keep going to you like nobody's going to make take your customers they don't really belong to you but i can understand where both people were coming from um we don't just like walmart a, a pack of hanes t-shirt you can go to walmart or you can either go to target and the choice comes you know do you like the atmosphere in Walmart? Do you like the atmosphere in Target? Which one is closer in distance? Walmart or Target? Uh, which one has the better price in your um, in your opinion? The customer service. So there are other things that come into play. Um, but I do understand you protecting your, your brand and your... Um, your craft, whatever you do, whether you're doing, um, you know, vinyls, pressing vinyls on t-shirts or cups or mugs, or if you're sewing something or you're creating anything, you want to protect it because that is something that is your idea, something that you came up with and something that maybe just was a hit for you and you didn't even know it was coming. Like you just put something out and just, it went viral and everybody started to share and you just start getting customers and you basically became overwhelmed like man i didn't know this was going to take off like that well that that right there that's what you protect you know but get this there is nothing new under the sun nothing i don't care what you create i don't care if it is a skirt if it is a shirt if it is a pair of pants if it is a logo um, if it is a specific wording on the shirt, like some people, let's say Martin back in the day to show Martin that he's used to say, you go girl. Well, if you put that on a shirt and somebody else put it on a shirt, you cannot attack somebody for putting it on the shirt. Like you did not come up the words you and go and girl. Now there may be a certain way that you put it on your shirt. You may use all blue letters and blah, blah, blah. And somebody copied that exact design. I can see you get offended by that. But if they had the words and they put it in another way, you can't attack. I, I I cannot. I can't see that being justified at all. Um, but again, that's your business. You do what you want with your business. But if that's your baby and you want to make money off of it, you protect it. You don't have to give away all your secrets. And that's what I'm going back to. You don't have to give away all your secrets. But I don't see a reason withholding withholding information to help someone like if somebody say where you get your needles from for your your surgeon well uh, you need to research that yourself uh, why would you even why would you that, that, 
Why are you just going to keep that to yourself? Why are you just going to tell the girl that you go to Joanne's? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. The petty stuff like that. You could tell somebody I went there. Or, you know, somebody say, what pattern books do you love? Um, you can say, well, I know I like this. And maybe you can Google da da da. You know, of course you can tell somebody. Now, you're not going to just baby somebody and just give them everything. They're going to have to put in the work too. But look, little stuff, let's be helpless one to another. Can we all just help somebody? Um, because again, if you think about it, we all needed help. We all needed help. We still need help. I mean, I see people who are older um, that that um, are still asking the question, well, how do you hem this? They don't know about French hems um, um, or a hunk, well, seams or Hong Kong seams. See, I said it wrong. You know, things like that, different seam techniques. Some of them are still learning. Some people don't know you can just use pink and sheeters. Some people don't know that. And you can say, well, if you don't want to do that and just surgery, you don't have surgery, just use pink and sheeters and just iron it open, iron it flat. Um, people still need help. I don't see a reason why you can't give it. Um, child, this and went to another place. I'm supposed to be talking to you about the fabric and we talking about this, but I hope it helps somebody. I hope it kind of brings you down a little bit because some people can't be prideful. But we don't know what caused them to be that way. We don't know if maybe somebody burned them and then it was like, you know what, now I can finally get somebody back. Now I see somebody do one thing and I want to get back at them. We don't know. So, you know, grace. Give people grace. Um, step back. Just think about, hey, I used to be there and I didn't know anything. And somebody helped me. So, in the same spirit, I want to just shift you in the right direction. That's all I'm saying. Just point somebody in the right direction. You don't have to spoon feed them along the way. You can tell them, look, I watched Brittany J. Jones. And she helped me a lot. I watched Mimi G. And they helped me a lot. And then they can... You know, just give them a place to start. That's all I'm saying. So, I bought this. I bought these two together. These are double brush poly. I bought these two together to complement one another. I was going to make one as a top, like for a dress, um, and then the other for the skirt for the bottom. And I don't know which part to do yet. Like which part is going to be the bottom, which part is going to be the top. But you guys can decide. So I think this was Gaia. See how pretty that is? It's like plum and um, oh, some greens in here, blacks. Oh, this is so pretty. And this is the striped fabric that I got to go with that. So do you see, I think I bought two yards. I think I bought two yards of this and two yards of this. So do you see how these two go together? Pretty, pretty. So, what do you think? Should the flowers go on the bottom, stripes on the top? What? I hardly have to go to Pinterest to see. Now, of course, Ellie and Mac had um, recently released the cuddle tunic and dress. And I believe this pattern with those bishop sleeves. I believe the bishop sleeves will go well with like a fitted bodice flare skirt and sleeves so i don't i don't know though because you know maybe a straight sleeve would do well with this i don't know because it's stripes and you know it's it's too much trying to do like trying to match up stripes with a bishop sleeve like really um with anything it's it's a lot with um with sleeves but i i love these two together and that's why i bought this because i saw the stripes I saw this and I think I did two yards of each. So it'll be enough left over if I want to do something else, you know, use it for a neck band or sleeve band or um, even like pocket band or something like on the cuddle tunic. And I'm doing it because I just made a video and the cuddle tunic is still on my my mannequin over here. This is a, this is a waffle knit. This is a golden waffle knit. See how pretty this is. So there's no smooth and furry side on this. It's basically consistent throughout. Ooh, this is pretty. And I think 
but this particular fabric I bought two yards and I know like with Ellie and Mac if I use the Chapman cardigan pattern that I can do this easily with two yards this next fabric also is I believe this is a double burst poly as well I don't know why I bought this okay yes I do never mind so most of the time when I buy any fabric um, I'm always thinking of a garment in mind, okay? Even though sometimes it's just sitting in my sewing room on a shelf or on the floor or folded up in a corner somewhere. I already know, okay, I bought this for this. So sometimes you already have in mind the garment that you want, but not necessarily the pattern that you're gonna use, if that makes any sense. Like I know I wanna make a dress, but I don't know which pattern for a dress that I want. I know I want the bodice. I love for my bodices to be fitted. I love the flare skirts and I love flutter sleeves or bishop sleeves. And again, I've already mentioned that in the last video about the bishop sleeves. And so I need to make sure that I have enough fabric to do all of that with. And so this next piece, it was on sale. So I don't know if it's still on clearance. So hopefully if you get a chance to go, by the time I have this video um, up, that the fabrics are still there because they do pretty well with buying a lot of fabric. And even if the fabrics that you see on my video are not available, you can go to the Knit Pop Fabrics Facebook group and there's a thread that they have for you to talk about or to comment under the restock that you, I mean, the fabrics that you would like for them to restock. And it's actually called a restock thread. Um, so, you know, they will go and try to find those same um, fabrics for you, especially if it's something special and you're like, I need this for this particular project. They are very good at listening to their customers. They hear your voice, they hear your concerns, and they try to get the quality fabrics that you are so um, much in need of. Um, and even if you can't do it, there is a Knit Pop BST group and it is buy, sell, trade. And so let's say you're looking for something and you tell them that you are ISO, which means in search of, you're in search of a particular fabric. Somebody might have that and they may have a couple of yards or may have just enough that you may need for your particular uh, project. And then they'll give it to you for, you know, a decent price. So this next fabric, I don't know how much, like I think, for, I think I did three yards of this because I think it was like $4. Um, it was on clearance. And so here it is, this fabric. So it does have stripes. If you look closely, it also has polka dots and it has flowers. All three of my favorites in one. Flowers, polka dots, and stripes. And so I believe that I bought these two fabrics to complement I don't think this one, because this one is clashing a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I like the blue with it better because the blue brings out the flowers. So let me put these together to show you. See? And I think that blue brings out these flowers here. And this is just a solid, um, I think this is poly, brush poly as well. So with this project, I believe I am going to use um, the blue with this fabric here. And I believe I'm going to make a dress. I love dresses. I love looking feminine. I love the flowy skirts. I love the fitted bodices. I love the flutter sleeves. And if not the flutter sleeves, the bishop sleeves do just fine as well. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna make it now because it's like the winter time and like it's gonna get cold and I don't have a proper cardigan to go over this. So um, I think this is gonna be something like when springtime comes back out. So uh, this was my favorite haul from Knit Pot Fabrics. I enjoy Knit Pot Fabrics. They ship just like that. Uh, they work with you and let me tell you something if you um order fabrics from them 
and let's say you added something onto your order, they will refund you the excess amount for shipping. They will. So they'll try to, you know, if they catch it in time, they'll put all your packages together. And if there is any overage they owe, they will give you your money back. Also, for every purchase from Knit Pop, you can also earn Knit Coin. And they can be applied to towards your other purchases. So basically, um, it's like you earn cashback rewards and it can be um, used for further purchases. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. I know I've been talking your ear off. I do like to talk, but I hope that it helped you in some form, fashion. And so um, I am still doing the, um, the sewing tutorials. I would love to continue to teach you to sew. Um, a lot of things have, you know, come up and it kind of put me back a little bit and I hate that, but I am still on it. So please continue to be patient with me. Um, more, um, I'm saying um a lot, but more stuff is coming your way from me to you. I thank you for your support. I thank you for constantly watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and to share with the world. See you guys later.